Before moving on, there are two interesting aspects worth exploring, one relating to the 22 years that Yaakov was away from Yitzchak, and the second dealing with the accountability of the brothers with respect to the sale of Yosef. It was argued that although the sale of Yosef was part of a larger set of events that led to Yaakov resettling in Egypt and the fulfillment of the decree that Ger Yeyeh Zaracha Be'eretz Lo Lahem, nevertheless the brothers themselves were to be held accountable for their participation in an otherwise immoral act. One could argue that if Yaakov was punished for events that were really out of his control, he was running away from uh, Esau, then the brothers certainly should be held accountable for their actions against Yosef. Yet the Torah is silent on what punishment, if any, they received. There is a section of the Yom Kippur Tefillah known as the Avodah, which provides us with a, a fairly detailed account of the Kohen Gadol's activities on this special day, hence the name the Avoda. The Avoda ends with the Musaf Vidui, and with that the conclusion of the Shachrit Musaf Tefillah for Yom Kippur. The introduction to the Musaf Vidui is a heart-rendering piyut, dealing with the Asara Haruge Malchut, the torture and death of ten of the most prominent Tanayim of the period following the Churban Beit HaMikdash number 2. The piyot is known as the Ela Ezkara, and using Kabbalistic concepts involving the transmigration of Neshamot, argues that the Neshamot of the ten brothers returned to earth in the bodies of these ten Tanayim in order to facilitate a kapara for the Neshama on account of the sale of Yosef. At face value, it appears that the Midrash is attempting to resolve a challenge to the belief structure, the theological enigma as to how ten of the most illustrious scholars of all time ended their lives under such horrendous circumstances. From the standpoint of the Roman Empire, they did what they had to do. From the standpoint of Yahadut, with an all-watching, all-caring God, an explanation needs to be forthcoming. And this explanation is provided by the Midrash and then formulated into a piyut. The Torah states that the Gonevish Umachara, one who kidnaps and then onsells the kidnappee, is punishable with mot yumat, with execution. And the Medrash puts the question into the words of the accusing angel, why it was that the brothers were not punished for their violation of this command. Within the realm of Pshuta Shel Mikra, this is not a problem, as one could argue that the command and punishment did not become active until after Matan Torah. But in the perfect world of Kabbalah, this was an act that remained unatoned. The premise of the Medrash and the Eila Ezkara is that the atonement came many generations later with the transmigration of the Nishamot of each of the ten brothers into the ten Tzadikim, the ten Tanayim, who through their deaths brought about an atonement for the sale of Yosef. In the words of the Payetan, Va'atem tisu avonavoteichem, you collectively will need to atone for the sin of your ancestors. In this case, referring to the ten brothers of Yosef.